hi my friends welcome to another exciting one today we are going to model a pouch from scratch feel free to grab the project files from the description below in case you want to follow along it's going to be a fun one an exciting one so open up your blender and let's go as usual we're going to start everything from scratch so let's go to general so that we get a fresh blender file right if you look at this corner here you'll be able to see the shortcuts i press from this corner here so first of all let's select these two objects and let's hit on x to delete them from our scene next let's go to the right orthographic view and then add in a reference image so i hit on the x here to go to our right orthographic view and then i'll do shift a and then we go to image and then reference right so once we click here you locate where you downloaded your pouch project file and then you hit on the reference to load in the reference image i'll zoom in right like here and then let's go to our image properties and let's change few properties here so first i'll untick the perspective so that when we go to perspective our image will be hidden and then next i'll select front so that our image is always on front let's take the opacity and then let's bring it down a bit so that we can see through our image next let's go to our perspective view and then shift a and then let's add in a plane right we're going to add in a plane and let's rotate it on the y axis to 90 degrees so i'll do r y and then i'll hit 90 degrees to rotate it on the y axis next let's go to our right orthographic view once again then let's try and align our plane roughly to the size of our reference image so let me do s to scale it on the z axis up like this until the height are of the same size then next i can select my image and then let's do g to bring it right in the center position it well in the center like this next let's select our plane and then s and then let's scale it in until it's roughly the same size as our reference image so next let's add in a couple of loop cuts here and there so let's go to our perspective view then let's select our plane let's do control plus a and then we apply our scale right let's hit on tab to go into edit mode let's select our edge mode then let's do control plus r and then let's add one loop cut right at the middle right next let's do control plus p and then let's bevel the loop cuts to create two loop cuts that will that will help us get one loop cut on each side which are equally distanced right so like this so these sides are going to be the edges of our pouch right so let's go to our front orthographic view once again to view our reference and let's add in a loop cut at the middle so we do control r add in a loop cut and then we bring it to the top like this so to somewhere here right and then next let's go to our point select mode select all the points at the bottom and then let's do s to scale it down until it's roughly the same size as our reference image so at this point we don't really need the reference image again so we can select our empty reference image x to delete it right and then let's add in a couple of loop cuts at the middle so let's do ctrl r loop cuts and then let me scroll my mouse wheel to create this number of loop cuts now adding another loop cuts in the center as well so ctrl r scroll my mouse wheel up and then i'll create my loop cuts like this right so next since let me go to my face select mode since this is our edge right we are going to um i'm going to move these points inwards like this to create that um illusion of um um how should i say it the pouch so that it seems like there's something inside our port pouch right but then we don't want it to affect the edges of the pouch so first let's select all the edges so i'll hold ctrl then click then i'll hold shift ctrl click and then shift ctrl click to select all the outer edges like this 
and then let's hide it from our sin so that if we make our movements they won't be affected right so you get what i'm saying very soon so i'll hit on h to hide right so they are not deleted they're just hidden so if i hit on tab you see it comes back then if i hit on tab to go to edit mode they will be hidden from our scene so so next let's go to our perspective let's go to our proportional editing at the top here and then let's make sure we have it set to smooth and then let's make sure it's active right so let's select a couple of points from here and then let's move them inwards to create that um to fill up our port basically right so i'll select i'll select a couple of hold shift to select a couple of points and then i'll do g you can scroll your mouse wheel up or down to decrease the fall off of your proportional editing so i'll hit on z x to to uh, to constrain it to the x axis and then i'll just move it up like this right then i'll select this then do g x and then i move it out right g x move out yes select a couple of them g and then x move all of them out in the x axis like that g x And then just keep moving them out till we create that kind of shape X. obviously yours is going to be different from mine but that's fine patches come in different shapes based on the item inside right so keep moving So it's roughly the same as you just have the rough shape like this. It doesn't really matter. We're going to add in subdivision and other stuff to just smoothen it out, right? So now, if I hit on Alt H, all our hidden parts will be back into our scene. So this is what we have now so let's add in a subdivision and then let's mirror it and then add in a subdivision modifier to see our progress right so next let's select everything let's select the half of our pouch go to our modifier tab and then generate we look for our mirror modifier so we select our mirror modifier we change the axis from x to z so let's hide this then xz so that we activate the z axis right so that we have this on the both sides next let's add in our subdivision surface so we go to generate subdivision surface and we set it to one like that so we can right click and then shade it smooth to see what we have right so the reason we are having this is some of the shapes are intersecting with each other so let's fix it so i'll select my shape tab into edit mode then I'll hit on A to select everything. I'll zoom in and then I'll make sure I turn off my proportional editing. And I'll do G to move everything back on the X axis, like this. So that's there's a little, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of gap between the two. So let me, let me do G to bring it back a bit like this. So we have a little bit of gap between the two shapes. I think it's too much let me just close the gap so you can hold on shift to move very slowly and precisely like that so i think that's fine for this so if you go back this is what we have right so next let's fill out let's fill out the, those gaps and then the bottom gap as well so let's tap into edit mode go to our edge select mode 
and then let's hold on alt click on this edge click sorry not this edge all the edges around like this right and then we can do e for extrusion and then x to extrude it on the x axis like that right so before we extrude it let me go back before we extrude it let's make sure we have the clipping turned on in our mirror so let's select all the entire angle again right like this and then let's make sure we have our clipping turned on and then now let's zoom in and then let's extrude it on the x axis to close the gap right so we do e x and then we close right because our clipping is turned on it just clipped itself once the each sides join so let me hide the subdivision surface so that you see what i'm talking about so right you see so both sides are joined right at the middle of our, of our pouch like that right so now let's um, move ahead right so let's so let's look at the bottom part but before we do that let's add in a couple of loop cards at the top and then at the bottom so we do control r then we add in a loop cut here and then we add another one here and then we add another one here as well right so let's turn on our subdivision surface tab out of edit mode and then this is what we have so next let's apply our mirror modifier and then let's see how we can tackle the bottom close the bottom part right so let's right click then apply our mirror modifier we can select everything tap into edit mode select everything and then let's try and merge it by distance to see if there's any doubles that we were escaped right so i think everything is fine so now let's scroll down to the bottom and then let's try and solve this bottom part right so i'll go make sure i have my edge select mode active then i'll hold on alt and then i'll click to select the entire bottom part we go to our face and then we go to grid fill to fill it inside with our grid fill like this so i can hide my i will click on this so that my subdivision is hidden inside our edit mode so that we can see our shape properly right so if i hit on tab you see the subdivision but then if i go out of tab the subdivision will be hidden right so next let's create some extrusion at the bottom so i make sure i have my face select mode active select these faces by holding shift control and then clicking to select these faces and then i will do i to extrude it inside a bit so I, I, you have to make sure i'm very careful that it's not clipping inside like that and then we can do e to extrude it inside right and then s to scale it down and then we can do s to scale it down and then e sorry not e again g z to bring it up like this all right now we have something nice like this so if i hit on tab and move out of edit mode this is what we have now all right so let's continue so we are done we are basically done with our, our porch this is the basic shape so let's continue and then let's add in more details right so next what we have to do is we have to even wrap this and then add in our our label so our label will be provided in the link in the description below let's show you grab it so that i can easily follow along yeah so at this point let's try and review unwrap this and this early stages and then let's add in our our textures our labels and then let's add in a little bit of light and then we can finally add in some touches and then render so let's go to our uv editing tab so that we get this and then 
let's select these entire faces right and then mark them as seen so we are going we are trying to select this entire flat face here and then we mark all these faces as seen right so i bring my mouse i'll scroll to bring my listing here make sure i have our edge select mode active then i'll click on out and then i'll click to select this edge make sure you are selecting this edge not the one in the middle or the one at the back right so we have this selected alt click on this edge holding shift to select up to here alt click shift to select this entire loop up to here and then we do the same thing up to this side alt shift click and then we select this then we can click on this to select this face here and then we'll do the same thing at the top alt shift click select the entire shape at the top so i'll hit on u and now go to mark seam to mark the entire face as seam right so i'll do, I'll do the same thing for the back quickly alt shift alt click and then alt shift click go to the side alt shift click you need to take your time right and then finally at the bottom alt shift click here and then the last one do alt shift click to select the entire loop around the face of our shape then we do u and then we mark it as seam right so now we have this face selected and then this face on the back selected so that's where we are going to apply our our textures right so now all we have to do is hit on a to select everything and then we hit on u and then we go to unwrap to unwrap our faces like this right so now if i come to my islands here i can select one individual point like this and then hit on l to select all the linked faces right so let me select this one l and let's kill it down something like this and then let's bring it somewhere here right so that's this bottom part and then this thing lie in the middle that's why not selected let's let's select these two and then let's do s to scale it up and then g to position it well select with the l g and then bring it this part here right so this, let's add in our label it's in the project files so we go to open locate our project files and then we have label here right it's a psd file or add a png file as well so the reason why i added a psd file is um you can easily make edits save it and then bring it back to blender and then it's going to work for you perfectly so i hit on open image to add in my label right so let's come to this side and then let's hit on you are still not going to see it but let's position our labels well and then you you try and preview it right so now if i hit on if i hit on viewport shading we will still not be able to see our label but then we fix that in a second but let's hit on a let's select one point hit on l to select the entire island and then g then i'll position it nicely s i'll scale it up so that it's positioned nicely in my scene i'll do the same thing for this one I hit on l select everything position it <coughs> nicely in my scene positioning nicely in my scene like this right so next let's <coughs> so next let's go to our layout let's drag here to create this workspace and then let's change it to our shader editor <coughs> let's make sure we have our viewport shading turned on so that we can see what we are doing let's add in a new material with this material selected let me select it and then let's hit on ctrl plus t 
to add in an image texture now let's click here and then let's import in our label like this right <coughs> losing my voice so this is it we have our label nicely imported as you can see it's picking up our shape very nicely you can easily make edits inside the photoshop file and then the edits will reflect inside the, the your final blend file is for ease of use right so once we are done we can set up our lighting and cameras let's decrease the roughness a bit to make sure it's a bit rough and then maybe we can play with the coats we can increase it to one and then we can increase the roughness a bit of the coats like this so that our our pouch is looking like a plastic pouch like this right <coughs> nice and beautiful so next let's create our scene so to create our scene since we are done with the uv wrapping you can take it a step further and then add a little bit of more details so to do that let's go to our viewport shading let's go to our solid shading this is optional i'll hit on tab and then i'll create some some more details here right so i'll do ctrl r to add in a loop cut right in the middle and then i'll do ctrl b bevel and i'll scroll my mouse wheel so that i create five loop cuts right in the middle like this and then we are going to select these those in the middle so let's go to our face select mode and then hold on control and then let's click to select this entire loop here and then hold on shift click control click to select the entire and then do the same at the bottom shift click then control by holding shift control and then we click to select these three shapes like this right so we can do i and then we can insert them inside and then we can do e to extrude them out like this right so that we create an extra details so if you go to tab we have something like this we can do the same thing at the back so let me just quickly do it shift click same thing i to extrude and then we can do e and then we can bring it a bit out like this so i have something like this showing that we have um extra loop extra um details um going on for us so we can take it to a, a next step by applying our subdivision surface and then going into the sculpt mode to add in a bit of variation and edit so let's apply our sub d before we do that we can create a duplicate so let's do shift d so that we have a duplicate of the original let's hide it in our camera then let's hide it in our scene right so next we can easily apply our sub d let's tab select tab into edit mode and then this is what we have let's go outside of edit mode and then let's apply our sub d modeling so this is what we have right so now we can change from edit mode to sculpt mode and then we can play around with some of the modes here to create a bit more of variation and details inside our pouch so let me select my cloth and then i can so make sure you don't overdo it else it's going to spoil your model so just you know, a little bit here and there to create some variations and changes in your model right so you can change let's find notch don't overdo it else your model is going to spoil right so once you are done and then you are happy with what you have right you can jump into object mode once again then you have this so now let's set up our scene and then let's set up our render right so i'll drag here to bring an extra scene hit on my camera scroll to set up my camera like this and then i'll hit on n go to my view and then we will lock camera to view next let's position our, our view in frame and then let's add in a couple of 
um, backdrop and then let's duplicate this shape right so i'll go to my render view change it from ev to cycles and then change it from cpu to gpu compute like that and then next we can add in a light so let's add in a backdrop so let's do plane then gz and bring it back and then let's scale it up like that right let's add in a light so shift a light then let's add in an area light g z let's bring it up for now and we can scale it up like this right let's face this side we can scale it up like this so that we can see our shape so next with our backdrop selected let's tap into edit mode and then let's go to our edge select mode select this edge e to extrude it on the z axis like this and select this bottom then we do control plus b then we can scroll uh, bring our mouse wheel up like this to create this kind of shape then we can right tab out of edit mode right click and then shade it as smooth right so next we can change our camera like this so let me tab let me hit n lock my camera to view position my camera well and then let's lock it once again and then next let's change our camera angle so i'll select my camera and i'll change my focal length from 50 to 90 right and we have something like this And then we can add in our lighting to lighten up the scene right so this light i'll bring it to the side i'll hold g and then bring it to the side now point it towards our 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 pouch and then we will increase the power so we we'll go to light and then we increase the power to let's say 200 right to brighten up this side so maybe let's increase it even more let's go to 500 to brighten up this side right we can make this light taller like this so i've scaled it on the y axis like this and let's do shift d to create a duplicate let's bring it to the side and let's point it back to the side right so let's do g and let's try and position it into find a nice angle to position our light so at this point you can play around with the lights to create the scene you want so i think something like this is nice let's select our backdrop and then let's add in a color so a base color of i'll go with a yellowish base color like this decrease my roughness yeah and then we have something like this obviously we can hit shift d then create another light and then maybe decrease the brightness of this light to let's say 200 now we have something like this right so next let's create a duplicate of our pouch so select the pouch and then shift d then we can create a duplicate and then let's rotate it so we do r on the z axis like this so the back is facing us and then we can do double tap r to rotate it freely like this until we find an angle that looks very nice right you can you we'll do a little bit of experimenting so you find an angle that works for you right so this angle works for me i'll do the same for this so i find a very nice angle that works for me right. then you can position your object in the scene very nicely and then you can do your final render so what is the final thing to do our final render we can go to our 
render properties and then maybe the color management so we we'll go to our render properties we we'll go to our color management and then we can change the look from to let's say high contrast right so that we have something like this if this is too much you can go with medium high contrast like this and then finally you can hit on render and then you can render your image you can decrease the samples based on what your pc can handle so i'll go with 100 for now to, to do just a test render right so i'll go to render and then render image to do my test render so this is what we have for the test render it's looking very nice but then we have a little bit of problem we need to fix there's some black outline going all along our our shape that we need to fix so to fix that let's go to our uv editing mode and then let's select let's tap out of edit mode let's select one of our nuts let's jump into edit mode once again and then let's come to this bottom here click on it let's make sure we have our face select click on one face and then hit on l you select that entire face so this is it so let's select it from here right and then let's bring it to some white portion of our label like this and then let's scale it down so that it's all white and then our black outline will be gone right let's do the same for this so let's select this tab into edit mode select one part of it and then let's hit on l to select that entire linked surface drag to select everything g to position it in a white space and then you can scale it down to remove all that black black part so we can hit tab out of edit mode go to our layout mode and then if everything is fine and ready for render we can easily do shift s to save and then we can hit on render and then render our final image so as you can see guys this is the final render if you loved this video please don't forget to subscribe or leave a like button thank you very much for staying with me i know it's been a very long one try to keep it original with a few cuts so that you can know the process that i go through right so keep it as unedited as possible as long as possible to explain every little bit of why what the option i'm using and why i'm using it thank you very much for watching see you on the next one it's my friend peace out so this is the final render you can just go to our image and then you can do save us to save your final render so i'll, I'll rename it as render now hit on save peace out